welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-43. Our last episode found the adventurers treating their prisoners fairly and opting to march them to justice into the town of Colby. Along the way, they ran into a militia group that patrolled the outskirts of the community. The group hid their origin location and were congratulated on bringing so many of the Green Sash gang to heel. The horsemen rode off to alert the residents of Colby of the prisoners' capture, and the group learned that Peepers, the Axe Beak, was quite intelligent and has been trained throughout the night by Karina the Waif. We rejoin the group as they reach the outskirts of the decorated town to cheering townspeople. The fatigue fell off their faces, the Delvers, the cheering townspeople brought big smiles to the group. Cabe and Sister Elaine steered the wagon through the narrow streets and nodded to the congratulatory throng. Fargus and Lady Irena guarded the left flank with Karina and Bulger on the right flank. Peepers had been hidden away at the edge of town. As the prisoners were paraded into the street, a series of boos and jeers were tossed at them along with some rotten fruit. The wagon was brought to a halt at a well where the thirsty mules quickly began to drink. A portly man in a dapper hat made his way through the crowd, flanked by guards. He greeted the group as the militia closed in on the prisoners, allowing the party members to come forward. Greeting each delver with a hearty handshake, the man introduced himself as Horatio Mellon, magistrate of Colby. He motioned to the guards who cut the ropes and herded the prisoners off through the crowd where they were mocked. Three cheers were given to the group, and was led by Horatio. Our people tell us you managed to dispatch a few of the bandits, but captured even more. Looks like you got most of the gang. Well done, well done indeed, brave adventurers. Congratulations and a reward are in order. Motioning to a lackey, a small woman approached with a wooden box with guards flanking her. The magistrate opened the box, revealing a great deal of gold, which impressed Bolger and Karina. Looking to one of the guards, he requested a count and received the mark of seven. He confirmed that the leader was not among them, and Horatio did some math in his head. He quickly pulled out seventy gold crowns, leaving a significant amount in the box, which was quickly scurried away. The coins were placed in a leather pouch, and the man held it out. Sister Elaine stepped forward and took the bag, giving a polite nod to the man. Gushing, the magistrate pointed out that there was more where that came from if the party runs across the notorious leader again. Bolger and Karina smiled broadly at all the positive attention. The gnome spoke up and asked if all the fuss was necessary for the capture of a few bandits, which garnered a hearty laugh from the magistrate. No, no, my diminutive friend. While we are thrilled that you have removed a blight from our community, we are preparing to celebrate a festival day. Fargus leaned over and pointed out that it was the Shorning Festival. The magistrate smiled broadly and smacked the large human in the chest. He gets it! Yes, folks, you are just in time for the festival which begins tonight. There will be food, drink, winking at the gnome, dancing, bowing to the ladies. It is a good time to be in Colby. We hope you will stay and enjoy the celebration. The group looked at each other and Lady Irena pointed out that they would be happy to. She then inquired if recent crime victims were around to take back their possessions. The emphatic leader nodded vigorously and pointed out that he could take care of that for the adventurers as well. The group looked at each other and shrugged, pointing out that they wouldn't have any idea on how to handle it. Sister Elaine, bowing again, thanked the magistrate for his servitude to his flock, which obtained a further blushing from the man. Cabe cleared his throat at the awkward exchange and asked if there was an inn of reasonable price in town where they could obtain lodging. The man quickly pointed out a pair of locations and advised that the Comstock Inn would be able to house their animals. The group shifted, fearing that the magistrate had spotted peepers. Puzzled, the man pointed to the oxen, well, these creatures, and your wagon. A look of relief crossed the faces of the party, but Karina spoke up. 
And these animals and cart don't belong to us. The bandits used them to hold their stolen loot. Cave and Fargus rolled their eyes at the admission, but they were stunned at the response from the magistrate. He approached her and kissed her hand, speaking softly. Lovely lady, those criminals do not get to keep the fruits of their evil and unlawful pursuits. You and your fine associates have earned the right to keep the vehicle and the oxen. The magistrate rose up and addressed the rest of the group, pointing out that they should stay at the Comstock Inn and tell the proprietor, Amos, that he had sent them there. I will see to the care of your animals personally. However, accommodations will have to be made in your own purview. I will have your wagon guarded until the rightful owners can be located. The group thanked the man and headed off to the respite. The wagon pulled up to the business, where it was clearly marked on a sign outside. Several passerbys yelled out cheers to the adventurers as their fame had apparently spread quickly. Karina, Fargus, and Cabe waited with the wagon outside while the spellcasters and sailor went in to make the arrangements. A few minutes later, the trio exited and announced that they were only able to obtain a pair of rooms due to the influx of people for the celebration. At a cost of only six silver swords, including one meal, the group felt the price was more than reasonable. It was quickly decided that the men would take one room and the ladies having the second. Karina broached the subject of peepers and everyone felt it would be better to leave the creature restrained in the room so as not to cause any undue issues. The waif quickly hid her growing pet under some blankets before the guards arrived and hurried the axe beak up to the room. After retrieving some food for the bird, she rejoined the group downstairs where the midday meal was obtained. After the meal, the group opted to get cleaned up and wander the town to see what the celebration would hold. Cabe and Lady Irena mentioned getting some clothing and Karina asked to join them. Sister Elaine pointed out that she wanted to go by the temple and check it out while Fargus was pleased to find out that Bolger was a drinker as well. They were going to find some libations at a nearby tavern. The party opted to meet back in the common room of Comstock around dinner time to share their experiences. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.